Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with day 304, October 30th, John chapters 13 to 17. Ministry to the Disciples by God's Son. Overview. Today's section includes what has traditionally been called the Upper Room Discourse. It actually takes place partly in an Upper Room, John 13 and 14 and partly in an unspecified location, John 15, 17, see 14, 31. These verses constitute Jesus' final instructions to his disciples before his death. In them, you will read of the importance of a servant's heart, the necessity of Jesus' return to the Father, and the provision of the Holy Spirit in his absence. There are many spiritual insights yet to be grasped by the disciples a realization that drives Jesus to his knees as he prays for his followers, both present and future. Chapter 13, Instructions to the Disciples Regarding Foot Washing Chapter 14 and 15, Instructions to the Disciples Regarding Fruit Bearing Chapter 16, Instructions to the Disciples Regarding Future Events Talking to the Disciples Chapter 17, Intercession for the Disciples, Talking to God. Insight, Go and do likewise, John 13, 12-17. There are times in our Christian walk when we wonder what God wants us to do to serve Him. While God might call us to specific tasks at specific times, there is one way to serve Him that is always applicable, serving others. Jesus gave us a powerful example when he washed his disciples' dusty feet, 13, 12 to 17. How are you serving others these days? Insight. Mission accomplished. Cross yet to come. John 17, 4. In his prayer to God the Father, Jesus reported, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. 17, 4. Though Jesus' death was still a day away, Victory was certain as the Savior studied each step to the cross with prayer. You can face today with confidence too as you stay in touch with the Father. John chapter 13 Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped the towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them, with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, Then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, A person who has bathed all over does not need to wash, except for the feet, to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, Not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, And you are right, because that's what I am. 
And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Jesus predicts his betrayal. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but this fulfills the scripture that says, The one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, Who is he talking about? So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, It is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, Hurry and do what you are going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, since Judas was their treasurer. Some thought Jesus was telling them to go and pay for the food or give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God received glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. As I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, You can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord? He asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. John chapter 14. Jesus, the way to the Father, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name 
and I will do it. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you, because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. John chapter 15 Jesus the true vine. I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch in withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends, since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. The world's hatred. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belonged to it. But you are no longer part of the world. 
I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. They will do all this to you because of me. For they have rejected the one who sent me. They would not be guilty if I had not come and spoken to them. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Anyone who hates me also hates my father. If I hadn't done such miraculous signs among them that no one else could do, they would not be guilty. But as it is, they have seen everything I did, yet they still hate me and my father. This fulfills what is written in the scriptures. They hated me without cause. But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the father and will testify all about me. And you must also testify about me, because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. John chapter 16 I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now, so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier, because I was going to be with you for a while longer. The work of the Holy Spirit. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I have told you. But in fact, it is best to you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin, and of God's righteousness, and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever He receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever He receives from me. Sadness will be turned to joy. In a little while you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that you'll see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, What does He mean when He says in a little while you won't see me? But then you will see me. And I am going to the Father. And what does He mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it, so he said, Are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, In a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor, when a child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly, and He will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively, and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly, because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes. I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world, 
and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last you are speaking plain and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming indeed, it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. John chapter 17 The Prayer of Jesus after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so we can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world, and they are staying in this world, for I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name, so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost, except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. My Daily Walk Reflect upon this thought-provoking statement by Robert Murray McKine. If I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. Yet distance makes no difference. He is praying for me. In John 17, Jesus Christ prayed fervently and specifically for his disciples, those he would leave behind to continue the work in his absence. And that means he was praying for you. Read the chapter that way, inserting your name in the appropriate places, beginning in verse 6. I have revealed you to 
blank. Blank was always yours. You gave blank to me. My prayer is not for the world, but for blank, whom you have given me. Now I am departing from the world. Blank is staying in this world. I am not asking you to take blank out of the world, but to keep blank safe from the evil one. Jesus himself prayed for us, and God listened. What encouragement. That is so true and so awesome. Jesus is always praying for us. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Fill in the blank for your name, knowing that Jesus is always revealing himself to you. And have a great day, and God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.